E.O. Jackson uh, here uh, with the word from Greater New Antioch Baptist Church. That's right, a word from the G Block and, and truths for these particular times. We're delighted to be able to come to you to bring you this message from Greater New Antioch Baptist Church. <clears throat> we hope that this message finds you and your family doing well as we all work to survive uh, this virus that we find ourselves in. We ask that all of us let's just continue to lift each other up in prayer and hopefully and prayerfully uh, whenever God sees fits and our health department people dictate we'll be able to gather back in worship in a safe way right now the goal of this pastor pastor Eel Jackson is for the safety and uh, good health of our members so uh, we're not gathering back at our worship place just yet but we're hopeful and prayerful that we'll be able to do that as soon as uh, better times uh, come along so let's just keep prayerful and let's keep supporting our churches of uh, worship our places of worship knowing that God is in charge of everything so uh, those of you who can and will keep us tuned in uh, each Sunday uh, right here uh, gnabc.org and on Facebook for uh, this word and then on Wednesdays we have Bible studies uh, you can look at our website and you can see how to catch us there let me give you a word today now again thank all of you for joining us and all of our members the blessings of the Lord be on you I'm praying mightily for you uh, and I hope that we all be able to gather uh, together real soon let's do our best to join in on the Friday night info time 
that we spend on the conference call or let's call each other and let's let's just not fall out of touch because we are a church family now a uh, word psalm number 107 psalm number 107 i have it here verses uh 27 uh, and 28 what i want to read they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man a drunken man they are at their wits in verse 28 then they cried unto the lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses let me talk to you about how to get help uh, from god how to get help from god you remember a story it has been told by me and countless other preachers about uh this man who was marooned uh, on an island he he was uh shipwrecked and he found himself marooned on this uh deserted island and uh, he had gone through several efforts of trying to uh get help and then uh, as the story has it one day lightning struck his little hut that he had been living in and when lightning struck his little hut uh, all of a sudden he thought of a ship had passed him by but the people came they came to that maroon and deserted island and he wanted to know from them uh how did you how did you know i was here he said they said to him well the way we found you we it's a good thing you started that fire and because you started that fire we were able to see you and get uh to you and a lot of times uh people will view their lives as that marooned man did uh they view their lives as just uh uh, uh without purpose and uh it just drives them to a point of homelessness uh and despair but we will see in this particular psalm how um this psalm it shows us how we can get help from god we need help y'all and we can get help. So this Psalm uh, number 107 was probably written during the time when Judah had gone into Babylonian captivity and had uh, uh, later uh, returned. And they prayed um, and they said to the Lord, save us and gather us from among the nations. Uh, that, 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 that request in this Psalm has now been answered and now um god is going to show us how in this uh particular psalm how god can use our trials to drive us to to trust him so when we look at this psalm the psalm is in and of itself is kind of like and i made some notations it's kind of like uh a psalm in and of itself it has uh uh four um uh uh, um, points to it uh, there are four groups of people um, in this uh, particular psalm and it's four groups of people first of all in verses uh, 4 through 9 you see the wanderers that's in verses 4 through 9 verses 10 through 16 you see the prisoners then verses uh, 17 through 22 you see those who are sick not physically sick, but sin sick. And then in verses 23 through 32, you see people who are overwhelmed uh, by their their circumstances. And for each one of these situations, God provides for us uh, an answer. And I need you to know, whatever situation you find yourself in, uh, God has provided for us. Uh, an answer. So I'd like to take these four groups of people, amen, if you will, and let me show you how we can get to the point where God will step in and help us. First of all, in verses four through nine, there were the wanderers. Now, uh, this group represents people who are just lost uh, in the wilderness and they are, are aimlessly wandering in confusion they 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 don't have any security or stability or city to call uh their homes and and these wanderers represent 
in life, those people who are uh, spiritual, spiritually lost and they're looking for meaning and, and they'll just understand that there's no genuine purpose uh, uh, for their life. And that is the way it is. If you are living apart from God, there seems to be no genuine purpose uh, uh, for your uh, uh, life. But you can you can be a nice person and do great and, and, and noble things. But if you are wandering aimlessly in life and you are lost, you can be like that little boy. That little boy was lost and didn't even know it. I'll tell you, uh, there, 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 there's uh, some people, there are some people who are lost. They don't even know um, uh, that they are uh, uh, lost. And so uh, you got to remember now, like that grandmother who took her grandsons to to Disney World, and she bought them the the the, the little uh, red flags to wave, and one of the grandsons was there playing and watching the parade, and uh, and he just found himself uh, leaving the grandmother and joining in with the parade, and he was just waving his little red fat flag, and uh, he the boy was lost and didn't even know he was lost. And there are a whole lot of people, they, they're just joining in, brothers and sisters, they're lost and don't even know uh, uh, they're, they're lost. But verse 9 tells us that um, these are the kind of people that God helps. He, he helps people who are, are hungry and thirsty in their soul. And God helps people who cry out to him. They realize that they're lost. One day you realize that you were lost and you cried out to the Lord. Amen. That's the wanderers. The second group that I want to say a word about are the prisoners. That's in verses verses number uh, 10. I won't read them all. Verses uh, 10 through 16. Such as sit in darkness in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction uh, and, and, and iron. These, these represent uh, uh, those uh, people who think that they can live apart from the word of God. They can do without what God has to say. They don't need the Bible. I pray God, those of you who are listening to me, this message, that you will continue to study the, the word of God. Uh, there are a lot of people uh, who claim to be Christians, but but they have cast off God's word and they live according uh, to their own uh, feelings. I don't have to do what God says do uh, anymore. But I need to tell you, if you cast off the word of God, brothers and sisters, whether you know it or not, <laughs> you 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 are you 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 are bound. That, that's what they are. If you talk to them and say to them, you need the word of God, they'll call that legalism. And, uh, and and they don't know that they've turned the grace of God into lasciviousness because they feel like I can just live according to my to my own uh, feelings. But but God does something. God sends hardships. He graciously sends hardships to these people uh, and, and pushes them to the point that they stumble. And after they stumble, everything that they relied on, according to verse 12, therefore he brought them down. He brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help them. That's what God does. Amen. Amen. I hope y'all are hearing this sermon. God God, God will, 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 will bring those people down to where everything that they rely on, everything that they trust in, uh, God will bring you, bring them down. Listen, right now, y'all, we don't have nobody we can trust but God. Did y'all hear what I just said? Right now, we can't call it trust uh, what the leadership in Washington says. We can't, we can't trust the White House. We can't trust God. The Senate, we can't trust Congress. What man? Well, uh, the governor. The, the, I'm telling you, y'all, we're just in a pickle. But I got a word for you today. In this pickle that we're in, let me just tell you, friends of mine, you can still trust God. I like that old song. I trust in God wherever I be on the land or on the raging sea. What about you today? Oh man, oh man, you oughta, you oughta. 
you ought to tell somebody, I, I trust God. When you get a chance to talk to somebody and tell them, I, 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 I trust God. Now, the next group is, and I think this is the third group, is, is those who are sick in verses 17 through uh, 22. I'm sorry for having to look around at the Bible. 17, fools. Notice how verse 17 begins. He calls them fools. You know, the only time the Bible uses that word is relative to somebody who don't believe in God. Uh, but this sickness that I'm talking about in verses 17 through 22 is not the sickness that's caused by some physical ailment, but, but, but this is a sickness that's due to sin. So, so the Bible doesn't talk about they're mentally deficient, but they they are morally deficient. There are some people who are not mentally deficient. They, with all the killing and stuff going on, amen, people are not mentally, these people are not mentally ill, but they are morally de deficient. Remember that, not mentally deficient, but morally deficient. So th th this, this, this group represents people who think they can just sin and get away with it. And, get, and then here's what uh, God does in verse number 18. Verse number 18, amen, says that their soul apparent all manner of meat and they draw near unto the gates of, of, of death. They draw near to death. In other words, listen, people who are sin sick, you're going to hit, hit rock bottom. But thank God when you hit bo rock bottom, the grace of God is there to rescue them. Amen. And thank God in this tech, God, they don't deserve it because they live their lives in such a way. And that's a good thing about God. We got to get this word out to people. That's a good thing about God. You, you, I don't care how wretched and wrongfully and willfully sin, sinning you live your life. Man, there's something about the grace of God. Oh, I long to get back to church so we can sing amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Watch this. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found. Well, blind, but uh, now I see. <laughs> that group right there, God will respond. But then here's the last group. Here's the last group in this uh, little, little mess. I hope y'all get it. Verse 23 through 32. I want to say a, a word about that group who, who was uh, overwhelmed by circumstances. That's what that's what happens in verses 20, 23 through they go down to the sea and ship. They do business in great waters. These see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Verse 27, they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and they are at their wits uh, end. I'll tell you what, um, this, this group represents, this is why I want to close those who feel like they can they can handle life, but I need to tell you today, sometimes brothers and sisters, you think and you believe that you can handle life problems on your own. Can I actually have you uh, any uh, rivers you can't cross, any mountains you can't seem to tunnel through? I got a word for you. God mm -hmm. specializes and he can do what no other power can do. I wish I had somebody. God can do it. And listen, when you find yourself at your 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 wit's end, you got to remember that you got to learn how to turn to God. Listen, God will God will put you in a situation. God will allow you to be in a situation, and you'll be in that situation, and you will discover can't nobody help me but God. I wish I had somebody. <laughs> oh, I wish I could hear y'all talking to me. And if somebody listening to this message, you know you have been there. Some of us are there now. Can't nobody, man, can't nobody help us right now but God. But there's good news in the text. When you get to your wit's end, you read this text. When you get to your wit's end, that ain't a bad place to be, y'all. <laughs> that's actually a good place to be because when you get to your wit's end, that's, that's where, that's where God is when we cry out. God will deliver us. Some of those old songs come to my mind. Yes, I remember when days were dark and dreary. And I didn't know what to do. My eyes were filled with tears because of disappointments 
down through the years. Oh, I can hear them like it was to yesterday. But I called, yes, I called, I called on the Lord and I got an answer. Last week, I asked somebody to text me, to call me, buzz me, do something. Give me a, a text at Pastor. I got an answer. Now, don't text me if you've never had to call on me and, 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 and didn't get an answer. I want somebody to text me or call me and say, Pastor, I called him and he answered me. Isn't that good news, y'all? What a word for us to leave on. You can get some help from God when you can turn. You might call a pastor. I may not answer. You may call a deacon. He may not answer. You may call a fellow church member. They may not answer. But if you call on the Lord, the Lord will answer you. How about it today? Brothers and sisters, I thank God today that God, you can get some help. That's all I've been trying to tell you in this little, little message in my little steady place at home. If you need help, help is available. Thank God the way this this text closes by saying he, he, he'll, he'll help you. And then i tell you what to do. I can't leave out verse 31 and 32. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people. Praise him in the assembly of the elders. Y'all, when he do it, give him some praise. I know we've been talking about the virus. That's all we've talked about is captured our imagination. We're trying to figure out. But while they're working on their cure for the virus, you ought to call and tell somebody that God has already worked some things out for me. I'm glad about it, y'all. That's the good news. I wish I was in another play because I sure would have preached a little taste on this sermon because God, listen, I know he'll help. He's been helping me down through the years. Y'all remember I used to always tell y'all about that song the late Dr. J. Townsend was singing all the time. Every time he would preach his annual state convention address, down through the year, the Lord has been good to me. I want to hear from somebody. Do something. Email me. Text me. Tell me. Pastor, I called him and he answered. I hope this word will help you throughout the rest of this week. You can lean and depend on it. We'll see you next time uh, here right here, gnabc.org and on Facebook. And I want to encourage you, people everywhere, keep supporting. Don't listen to all these naysayers. Keep supporting your church, doing the right thing by your church uh, family until we can gather again in the Lord's house. This is Pastor E.O. Jackson. I'll see you next time.